Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Airline Chicken. That's right, come fly with me. Let's fly, let's fly away. Back to a time when traveling on an airplane was considered a very special experience. And the ladies wore dresses and the men wore suits and ties. And people would smoke cigarettes and drink cocktails the whole way. Oh, it was quite the scene. And this airplane wing shaped chicken breast was one of the most popular menu items from that era. But unfortunately, it's pretty much been lost to time, which is why I'm so excited to show you how to do this here. And to get started, what we're going to need is at least one whole chicken, since ready to use airline breasts are almost impossible to find in the store these days. And before we actually create our airline breast, we're going to do two things first. We're going to remove half the wing by cutting through that joint where the flat part of the wing meets the drum at. And then we're also very carefully going to cut through the skin between the thigh and the breast. All right, be careful not to slice into the meat, but we're just slicing between that skin that separates them to make this next step a little easier. And by the way, I should mention, if you're going to do this, you may want to look through some of our chicken thigh and chicken leg recipes, since you're definitely going to have those left over and ready to use. And then what we'll do once a little bit of that initial prep's been done is take our finger and find the breastbone that divides the two breasts, which is kind of easy to see since it's directly in the middle but even easier to feel. And once identified, what we'll do is slide our knife directly on top of that. But as we do, our knife's gonna actually slide along one side or the other. And then what we'll do once we've cut a little bit on either side of that bone, and we've basically identified where the breast starts, we will slowly but surely slice that breast off the carcass by keeping our knife flat against the carcass, whether that's the breast bone now or eventually the rib cage. And we'll use mostly the tip and the first few inches of our knife and by the way, the biggest challenge for me here is not to block the camera and to figure out which angle you can see this best at. But bottom line, as long as you keep your blade pressed against the bone and not slicing into the meat, you're doing it right. And what we can do when we get to about here is go ahead and cut through more of that skin that's holding that thigh and the bottom of that breast together. All right, so hopefully you can get a pretty good look here at what's going on on the side and the back of the chicken. But let me go ahead and stop here and let me turn this around so you can see how we're gonna trim it off the front. And as I just described, we want to make sure we keep our blade right against the bone. In this case, the wishbone. Okay, can you see that? Let's keep the tip of our knife right there, and we'll continue cutting off the front of the breast, all the way down to the bottom. And theoretically, at this point, the only thing holding that breast and wing onto the carcass is one ball and socket joint, which should be pretty easy to see and feel. And then somehow, someway, with the tip of our knife, we will find that joint, and we'll cut right through that cartilage. And that's it, congratulations, you just created an airline chicken breast. And we could go ahead and use that as is in any and all of our favorite chicken breast recipes. But wait, there's more. I'm gonna show you a technique for enhancing this breast using the tenderloin from the other side, or chicken finger or chicken filet as it's referred to. So we'll go ahead and remove that little strip of meat, either by pulling or trimming with our knife. And then what we'll do if need be, Sometimes there's a little bit of connective tissue attached to one of the ends. And while it's not a big deal, that can be a little tough. So I'll usually take a few seconds and trim that out if necessary. Otherwise, just leave it, no big deal. And then once they've been removed and trimmed, we'll go ahead and season these up with a little bit of olive oil, as well as some kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper. And then in my case, a little bit of herbe de Provence. And it's probably super obvious, but I'll tell you anyway. This technique's gonna work with any and all of your favorite spices. So please, please use whatever you want. I mean, you are, after all, the Michael Buble of how to flavor your chicken filet. So not only do you not have to use what I used, I don't even think I want you to. All right, come up with your own thing. Speaking of which, I forgot the cayenne, so I stopped and added some. But anyway, what we're going to do is season these up, and then believe it or not, we're actually going to stuff these under the skin. Oh yeah, you heard me. What we'll do once those are set is take our finger and gently but firmly Push that under the skin right next to the wing bone, and you'll see it will easily separate. And then what we'll do is slide our highly seasoned chicken tenderloin under the skin. And by the way, if there's a bigger end, I like that end to go in first, because that will match up with the smaller end of the breast. And then once it's in there, we'll make sure it's nicely centered, and all pressed down and smoothed out nicely. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing to the other breast. And basically my idea here is that we're taking a little piece of it off and dries out when we cook it anyway. And by using it under the breast, not only is that going to stay moister, but as it's cooks, because that skin's a little bit stretched out, I think even more fat renders out and it gets a little bit crispier. So I believe this little bonus technique has more than one advantage. And that's it. Once we've successfully slid that piece of meat under the skin, 
We will finish off the seasoning by applying a generous sprinkling of kosher salt on both sides. At which point our airline chicken breasts are ready to cook. Or of course we could wrap them up and pop them in the fridge for later. Okay, this is definitely something you can prep ahead of time. And yes, when you put two of these together, they do look like a heart. Which I love. I mean heart. But anyway, if we want, we can wrap these up and use them later. But since I need some final shots, let's go ahead and cook a couple. Which I'm going to do in this pan set over medium high heat and a little bit of olive oil. Starting, of course, with the skin side down. And generally in the restaurant, once these are marked in the pan, they're finished in the oven. But if you want, even though it's a little trickier, we can do these all the way in the pan on top of the stove. So what I did is give that first side about six or seven minutes. Then we'll go ahead and flip that over and cook it on the other side until cooked through. And we'll also back our heat down to medium. And of course, if you have to adjust that up or down, go ahead. That is just you cooking. And sometimes what I like to do while the second side's cooking is go ahead and toss in a chunk of butter along with some fresh herbs. And once that butter melts, it gets infused with all that herbaceous goodness. We can use that to baste our breasts, which if someone's watching you do this, totally makes it look like you know what you're doing. But anyway, we'll go ahead and let that second side cook, basting with herb butter if we so desire. And we will continue to do that until our chicken is cooked through, which for many folks in America means 165 internal temp. But not me, I like to live dangerously. I only go to about 150. Shh, do not tell the USDA. But the fact is, once you reach 140 to 145, anything that could hurt you is dead. And by not going all the way up to 165, you're going to get something that's way, way more tender and juicy, as you're about to see. And once that is done to our liking, we'll go ahead and remove that from the pan. And we'll keep that warm for about five minutes while we make our pan sauce. And we'll do that by adding a splash of vinegar to our pan drippings, along with a little bit of chicken broth or stock. And we'll go ahead and bring that up to a boil on high, whisking occasionally. And what we'll do is boil that for about two minutes, which should release all that goodness from the bottom. And then once that happens, all we need to do is turn off the heat and whisk in a chunk of cold butter. And thanks to the acidity of this liquid and the motion of that whisk, that butter is going to be emulsified in, creating a very simple, very beautiful, extremely flavorful pan sauce. Or pan jus, if you prefer. And that's it. Other than tasting that for seasoning, you're pretty much done and ready to serve up. Which is what I'm going to do right now. And I'm going to go ahead and cut my beautiful airline breast twice to hopefully make for a little bit more of an interesting presentation. And I'm going to go ahead and transfer that next to some prop spinach. And then we'll go ahead and spoon over our freshly made butter sauce. Actually, now that I think about it, this is a double butter sauce. Note to self, trademark phrase double butter sauce. And by the way, when you're saucing something with crispy skin, put the sauce underneath. All right, if you spoon the sauce over the skin like I'm doing here, you're going to lose that crispiness. So do as I say, not as I did. Speaking of which, I finished that up with a sprig of rosemary that I think we can all agree added absolutely nothing to that plate. So maybe not do that either. But anyway, despite that, I still think this came out looking absolutely gorgeous. So I grabbed a fork and knife and went in for the official taste. And as promised, not only did that filet under the skin help keep everything nice and moist and juicy, it also allowed us to season this chicken breast from the inside out. And by the way, I can tell you're a little concerned that that breast looks undercooked. But you know what, it really is not. All right, part of it is our dry seasoning, plus our camera angle, plus all that extra moisture from not overcooking it, that's given it sort of a translucent look. But as you can see here in the close-up as I cut through this, it really is cooked through. And the reason it looks like this is because it's not cooked to 165. So I know people freak out when they don't see pure white, chalky looking chicken breast. But as I said, this is perfectly safe. And if you've never had chicken cooked this way, definitely, definitely try it like this sometime. At your own risk, of course. So to summarize, I just loved everything about this. Although in hindsight, I did regret not using fresh, bright, beautiful green herbs inside, since I thought that would have looked a little better. But anyway, that's it. The airline chicken breast. While we will never recapture that golden era of air travel and being able to fly anywhere we want without ID, we can, however, with some very basic knife skills, recreate one of the classic dishes from that time. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.